So this video is about the factor theorem and the factor theorem is super straightforward and super useful. If P of A is equal to zero, then X minus A is a factor of P of X. What does that mean in an example? Well, if P of X is equal to that and P of one is equal to subbing one in, we get zero, then X minus one, not one, but X minus one is a factor of that. So this statement here, if P of A is equal to zero, in our case, we put one in for A and it's, it's equal to zero, then X minus A, X minus one, X minus A is a factor of P of X, is a factor of P of X. So that's what it is. Now this comes directly from the remainder theorem. Now a reminder that the remainder theorem states the remainder of a function divided by x minus a is equal to p of a. Sub in that value and you'll know what the remainder is. And the remainder is, is this guy right here. So if p of x is equal to the quotient of x times x minus a, and if the remainder was equal to zero, then that means that these two are factors of this one, right? This times this makes this. So these are factors, which means that X minus A is a factor. All right, so that's just our little proof based on the remainder theorem. Let's do some stuff with it. So we're gonna factorize this function right here. So we need to find one of these. We need to find a factor X minus A. We know that if it's a factor, we should be able to sub in the value of a in here and get a remainder of zero. We should also know that if it's a factor, it a needs to be a factor of this constant right here. Because eventually when we factorize this, we're gonna end up with uh, something uh, plus some times something times like okay, a something, right? And the constant term, this constant term here, comes from multiplying this value by this value by this value. So in this case, if we do this times this times this, we get six, we get negative six. We get a constant term of negative six. So this is not the factorization of that, but what I'm trying to tell you is that we can guess or make good guesses at what A might be by looking at the factors of our constant term. So step one is to guess A by looking at factors of the constant. All right, so negative two. So the factors of negative two, uh, one, two, but also negative one and negative two. So we could sub any of these four into P of X and see if it's equal to zero. So let's start at the top, subbing in P of one, one cubed minus three times one minus two. We get one minus three minus two, which is um, minus four. Okay, that doesn't work. X minus one is not a factor of this. Try again. All right, what about P of two? We get two cubed minus three times two minus two. That gives us eight minus six minus two. That is zero. Yes, that's the thing we're looking for. So we can say therefore X minus two, not plus two, X minus two is a factor. All right, we are in business. So now that we know X minus two is a factor, there are two different ways that you can proceed here. So I'm gonna show you one method, the method I prefer, but then I will also show you the other method. All right, so method one. We know that P of X is a cubic, right? So let's write X cubed minus three X minus two. And we know that a factor of it is X minus two. We just found that. Now, we have a linear factor and we wanna to get to a cubic, which means that this factor here is gonna be a quadratic. A quadratic times a linear makes a cubic. If you wanna to get to a power of three here, you're gonna need a power of two here. All right, so I'm gonna put in my mystery quadratic here, ax squared plus bx plus c. 
All right, and that's the quadratic that I'm looking for. Now that quadratic, let's expand. I know it feels like I'm going around in circles, but let's expand these brackets by doing this times this, 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 and this times this. We're going to end up with six terms. So I know this looks big and long and complicated, but now let's look at what we can do. We can equate terms here. We have an x cubed here, and the only x cubed term here is ax cubed. So equating x cubed and ax cubed, we can say that a, we can say therefore a equals one, right? Because that and that. All right, where else can we look? Well, look over here. We have a negative two here. That's our constant term. And the only constant term we have here, look, they all have x's in them, except for this one here. So negative 2c. So we know that negative 2 equals negative 2c. Let's just write that down. Negative 2 equals negative 2c. Therefore, c equals negative 2 divided by negative 2, which is 1. So now I know that a equals 1 and c equals 1. So let's write that everywhere here. Uh, actually, let's write another line so we don't get too confused. So a is one, so I'll just write x cubed here. We'll keep bx squared as it is. cx, we know that c is one, so that's just x. Negative two a, we know that a is one, so that's negative two x squared. Negative two bx, we don't know b yet. Let's leave that as it is. And negative 2c, we know c is 1, so just negative 2. All right. Now, this is the only bit you really need to think hard about. We've got this uh, bx squared here and that negative 2x squared here. So I can just rewrite this as x cubed and then plus x squared b and negative 2. b and negative 2. All right. Wait, there's no x squared term there. All right, so the x squared term is zero. So we need this to be equal to zero. So therefore, b minus two is equal to zero. So b is equal to two. All right, what happened here? I know that a is equal to one, c is equal to one, and b is equal to two. I could have found out that b was equal to two in a different way. Um, because I've got this x here and this negative 2bx here. So I can write that as x, 1 there, 1 minus 2b. And I know that x is equal to negative 3. So 1 minus 2b is equal to negative 3. And that means that negative 2b is equal to negative 4. And b is equal to negative 4 divided by negative 2, which is 2. All right, so you can see I found B two different ways. Oops, just got off the camera a little bit. Um, okay, so like I said, we now know that A is equal to one, we know that B is equal to two, and we know that C is equal to one. So we can put them here, here, and here. So now that we've done that, we've got X minus two times X squared plus two X plus one. This right here is just a quadratic, and you should know how to factorize quadratics. This particular quadratic factorizes to be x plus 1 times x plus 1. Um, we can make this just a little bit neater. x minus 2, x plus 1 squared. All right, that is my preferred method for factorizing this, right? Um, I create this extra quadratic here, and then I solve, I expand it all, and then I solve for a, b, and c, and then once I know what a, b, and c are, I factorize. Now, if you don't like that, there are there is a different way. The different way is to say that uh, if we started with x cubed minus 3x minus 2, and we know that x minus 2 is a factor, we can do polynomial division. So we can say x cubed minus um, 0x squared minus 3x minus 2, and then divide that by x minus two. And if you go through that polynomial division, I'm not gonna go through it because if you're choosing this method, and I don't suggest you choose this method, the other method is superior for a number of different reasons. But if you do go down this method, do your polynomial division, your quadratic will pop up 
here and you'll be able to move forward from there. All right, that is the factor theorem. If you sub a in and it's equal to zero, you're gonna have x minus a as a factor, and then you use that fact to fully factorize whatever polynomial you have going. All right.